What's up guys, it's Chachi Power here to do a Rocket Punch Army review. Today we have the Transformers Masterpiece Thundercracker from Hasbro Toys. And you'll see it comes in the standard Masterpiece box. If we spin it around, we'll see the back here has some nice artwork along with some information on this certain Decepticon here. Now as you can see, Thundercracker is a very handsome figure. And what we're going to do is uh, put him next to his little self which is the Generations Thundercracker and you'll see very very big uh, resemblance there obviously and this also helps you see what scaling difference there is between the two obviously a much bigger figure than this one as of the filming of this review he is uh, rather difficult to find online and in the stores but uh, I happen to get lucky so I'm able to do a review for you guys so here's Thundercracker um, now he is based on the MP11 mold, or he is the MP11 mold, just uh, different colors, different paint apps, and stuff like that. Uh, just as good, nothing was sacrificed in the Hasbro version, even though it's basically half the price. Now, you don't get the uh, same coronation set the MP11 Starscream comes with, but you do get a stand right here, which uh, is more than you can say for the Takara Tomy Starscream, which does not have a stand. Now, if you're a Transformers fan, you've most likely already seen about 22 reviews on this, so there's no need for me to go into a ridiculous amount of detail but I did want to show you guys a figure in case you are a follower of my channel and are not familiar with this so he's uh, made out of very very nice plastic Temple printing is beautiful the design on the wings the Decepticon logo is actually better than the Starscream one in my opinion I always like the bordered uh, Decepticon logos he seems to have more paint apps than Starscream the head sculpt absolutely beautiful let's see if we can get in there I mean that head sculpt is very very old school transformery look at that and the eyes are painted red there's no light piping and I do like this the fact that the sides do push in that's for transformation I thought that was a neat little feature even though it's not a uh, an actual gimmick for play but it's pretty cool nonetheless and he's got the opening missile pod things here you know he's got a lot of Panel lines everywhere, they're not uh, filled in with any color or anything, but I, I just love all the detail that's been put into this figure. And I love the color of that gunmetal down here for the, the little booster pieces here, and the feet here. We'll turn it around back. Actually, let's take a look at the uh, tampo printing there. It says Sonic Boom. I mean, all the detailing is very, very sharp, at least on, on my specimen here. And just overall, very great. It doesn't have Decepticon logos like the MP11 back here but it's not that big of a deal. I do like that he has the G1 style tampo printing here. These are not stickers, they're actually printed on there. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying, oh they don't like that the way it's uh, it has stickers, but these are not stickers, they're actually printed on, which is a very nice feature, which we'll get into more in uh, the jet mode. Now articulation wise, he does have a pretty uh, good amount of movement on his head here. He does have the shoulders that go out. They're actually on ratchets, you'll see the teeth for the ratchets there. So the arms do ratchet out like this. He does have the elbow double jointed nonetheless. And if we take a look at that double joint right there, you'll see that there's something that resembles a piston there. I thought that was a really cool touch there. The wings do move in and out as desired to give you a, a different effect on the wings back here. I like to keep them kind of out like this just to give them a more extreme angle here. Now due to the engineering, it has no waist, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the legs do go forward, as you see here. There's a swivel up here. You do get uh, the knees, which are double jointed. You'll see the top part there moves, and then the secondary part at the bottom here. And then you get the feet here. These feet actually do not move. This moves, but that really uh, doesn't make any difference as to how he stands. Uh, the legs go out this way. Now, Notice as I'm handling him, this piece keeps popping up. That's pretty much the only annoyance I have with this figure is that it does not tab down uh, securely. It's just pretty much you hold him and this goes up. Now if we take a look at the hands, the wrists are articulated. Not just the wrist, but also the fingers. You'll see the index finger and then the remaining three fingers are together. But you'll notice they do have movement from side to side this way which I thought was pretty reasonable so it makes up for them being stuck together and he's also got his thumb here now transformation is pretty straightforward it's it's not that difficult I mean I did it without uh, using the instructions and the instructions by the way show the directions for the original mold which has these like 
things that hang down on the side here which are not on this figure it also shows you two different heads which this only has one head so it might cause a little confusion for those of you that are not familiar with uh, these masterpiece figures but uh, it's pretty straightforward like I said I wanted, I was not going to do it for the video but let's just do it who cares I want to fold up his hands make sure the fingers are not sticking out uh, let's see where I can start I, I usually like to start at the feet uh, since that's easy the feet you just twist around fold this over like so come around bring this up put the heels in right here bring that down like so uh, next I guess we can pull this up um, come towards the back here bring this nose cone down so you can actually bring it out through here like so alright and then this you want to open bring this piece down the cockpit area snap that down bring this up snap it in then the head here you'll see the head does not really fit alright so just want to push the two side pieces I showed you earlier and bam now it does fit alright bring this down it's a lot of just fooling around just trying to get things out of the way I'm sure some of you are like, oh, you forgot this. This would have made it so much easier. I really don't care. I'm doing it just my own way. Whatever works. And see, it's starting to look like a jet. Bring this here. Connect these two. Like so. All right. And we got to work on these arms here. Might want to move the, the null rays out of the way. Now, this is the, to me, the hardest part is just these things. I'm sure someone's like, oh, there's such a much easier way to do that and I can't I don't know I just fool around with it till it sort of does what I need it to uh, let's see what we can do here after a lot of spinning these <laughs> will line up together this way I wish I could show you that it's just a little tricky for me um, and then just the arms obviously come in ratchet them down turn them this way uh, like so bring this in here just make sure everything's aligned you'll see I'm not too aligned there there you go and everything snaps rather nicely uh, bring the arm down in oops popped off the null ray thing there by mistake all right something like this there you go just like that then the wings snap them in like so make sure everything in here tabs like that and push the legs in like that and then these little two tabs come down like so just line everything up make sure everything snaps into place align the uh, no ray things here like that and this one that fell off I just gotta align this one pop it back in by the way these pop off uh, easily and snap back on easily so it's not a big deal oops I did forget to pull these things out. Let's move that, pull this out like so. Then just tab that in, tab that in there. Bring these down. Just make a minor adjustments, make sure everything is nice and even. And there you have Thundercracker. Now this is a beautiful alternate mode. Uh, I love the way it's, it looks really like just a realistic uh, jet. There's nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing on top that gives this away as being a robot, aside from the Decepticon logos. But I'm talking about, like, what, what people call kibble and stuff like that. Until you get to the bottom, which, it's still not too bad. I don't think it's that bad. But, um, yeah, so this is Thundercracker. Now, let's just point out a couple of things. He does have, I believe this is what they call an air brake. It does slide up. This is, uh, I believe it's uh, die cast metal. Then if we come out to the front here, you just move little panels away and you can pull out the landing gear, which has a wheel that rolls. You can actually hear it. And the rest of the landing gear is just little teeny ones back here like so, which I thought was cool. And then you got the nozzles back here that do move up and down. And I did point out the tampo printing before. Here's the sonic boom. It just shows Thundercracker holding Soundwave there. And, uh, you know, I did tell you guys the tempo printing is sharp. It definitely is. I mean, check out the Decepticon logos. There's 
no screw ups on that at all. The only kind of weird thing I see is like right there, it looks like they went over it twice just on this line here. The, there's a white bar and a little red line that goes down and you'll see it kind of shifts a little bit. I don't know what, what that's all about but it's on on both uh, wings here. If we move here, uh, again temple printing really sharp. I mean I'm just very impressed and then over here it's got the L TC Joe Big Daddy Kide, which I believe he's uh, one of the guys responsible for uh, the design of the Thundercracker uh, graphics. And on the other side, it does say Captain J Dragon Sass, which almost says Dragon's Ass. And then it's got reflector, everybody calls them reflector tattoos here in camera mode. He's got them on both sides. And then he's got a D24 designation here and there. Don't know what that's about have not right up on it and of course he does have the opening cockpit with one little cockpit there for your little holographic pilot which is chrome nice touch sits right in there close that up and of course he has a little radar in the nose now while this has all the makings of a great toy it's not necessarily something you want to give to a very young kid um, this is not going to break too easily. I mean, like the guns come off and stuff like that, but uh, things will happen. Things will break or fall apart if given to a child small enough. So if the child is is old enough to understand that this is a very delicate item, maybe he's old enough to have one. But um, for everybody else, uh, yet you still have to be careful. I don't care what age you are, you still have to be careful. One of the things you want to be careful with are these little tips here okay not because they're sharp or anything which in any case this will gouge out an eye if you decide you want to stick your face in there but I'm, I'm talking about uh, durability wise like for example I find my I find myself when I, the first couple of times transforming it laying it on the rug upside down while I fiddled around here and these things would snag on the rug now you don't want to pull up while it's snagged on a rug and break it also you know when you're messing around with it standing him in robot mode these things tend to hit other things so just be careful displaying other than that I, I really didn't find anything that I would think would break very easily but then again I'm not really manhandling this now we're gonna get into the stand here here's a stand with his uh, name he's got the missiles here uh, I should have showed you this when he was in robot mode but uh, basically you take this part put it here you stand the robot up and there's a, a butt peg that goes right in here and you can hold them standing up but at least I can show you how it is in airplane mode so you'll notice here it's got a little hook which is going to go right under here so you just uh, put the hook in there make sure that this forms one peg that will go into this round hole there so we'll try and do that, keep putting in the wrong spot. There we go, like that. Let's put the landing gear in so it looks a bit more proper. And here is Masterpiece Thundercracker with his generation size self. Take a look at those, both excellent figures. The transformation is pretty similar, just on a you know little bit more complicated scale but otherwise very fancy both of them very nice so yeah that's pretty much it for the review guys uh, if you have any questions or comments leave them below uh, if you want to see this guy uh, compared to the MP11 Starscream make sure you check out my other videos until next time guys bye bye